So guys, we got this 2003 Explorer here. Power seat doesn't work, that's what they said. So, we're gonna check to see what's causing it. So I'm gonna bring up a diagram, we'll see what fuse it is or what powers it, whatever's easy to get to, and we'll go from there. Because I brought my Tesla lights, because I'm doing this mobily. See what's easiest direction. Okay guys, so I'm in Mitchell right here. This is our power seat diagram right here. It looks like fuse one. Uh, in the central junction box behind the dash. So you can see right here the fuse feeds the entire seat. It says entire seat. So we'll check that quick and we'll go from there since nothing works. Okay guys, so I got the test light touching. Let's see if I can show you guys. Touching one side of the fuse right there. So we'll move over and touch the other side. And the other side, we have no light. See, no light. So I think our fuse is blown. Let's go back to the other side. Test light lights. So we're gonna pull the fuse out, we'll look at it. So look at that guys, fuse is blown. So I'm gonna go grab my fuse kit and I'll grab my lap scope. And we'll scope this seat. And we'll see what's going on with it. Okay guys, so I got my uh, fused extension lead, I guess you call it, or a loop, whatever you want to say it, current loop, with a 25 amp circuit breaker. I don't have any 30 amps in this uh, uh, ATM fuse style. But I got my amp clamp set up, and I got uh, my test lead here. I'm using my new test leads AES Wave made for me. These are called the binary leads. They have a casing on them, so they don't get tangled. So it's two leads in one, see? These things are amazing. I think it's 20 foot, it's either 15 or 20 foot long. But it's really nice, and then you can connect all your leads on here. So I can leave these like bundles up. I'm gonna have new ones. I'm gonna get new ones that are shorter, like three foot for underneath the hood. But you can finish these in the door, whatever you want. They're still real flexible. They just have a nice tube over top of them. And they roll up really, really nice. So we're gonna get back, it's got the Pico set up. So I'm gonna switch over and we're gonna screen record. Okay, so we got the Pico set up. Now I'm gonna move the seat and you'll see what happens. So we go back, forward. The front goes up and down. The rear ain't moving. Let's go front. There we go, we can see our current again pulled. Now let's go back, see what happens. Look at that. It bound up. So now why did the seat bind up? Let's look underneath here. Let's see. Let's see what happens when we go back. Look at that shaft sticking down. So the shaft spins on the up and down. So that must be the back of the seat. So I'm going to stop this. Stop the Pico. Let's see. Stop. Maybe it's going to stop. Here we go. Stop capturing. And get this thing to work. Look at that. So that was digging into the carpet. And then it would bind the seat up and pop the fuse. So I'm going to see if we can fix this. And then we'll go look at that capture again. Okay guys, so I fixed it with a nut and bolt. The bracket's still a little bent. I might be able to straighten it a little bit, but not too worried about it. It should work. So it looks like somebody had cut the pin. Uh, let me find out where I set it. I had the pin in here. Luckily I keep this like assortment of like Harbor Freight bolts in my truck, but somebody had cut the pin. Don't know where I set it. I'll look for it real quick, but that should work. All that is is for raising and lowering the seat. So let me see if I can. Uh, let me see if I can find the pin that was cut. Okay, guys. So I got the power seat back together. I can't, I can't find the pin. Hopefully, I can end up finding it. So I'm going to change our scaling here a little bit. So let's see what happens when we move this seat. So we'll go all the way back. 
Look at that. So we're pretty much maxed out. Oh, did I tighten the bolt up too tight? I just cranked it a lot tighter. I wonder if I tightened it too tight because the back of the seat's not going down. Okay, so we can go all the way forward. Okay, so look at that. We can't pull. Uh, more than what? 18 amps, 17 amps. So let me quickly loosen that bolt up a little bit. Okay, guys. So we'll try this again. Let's see what this seat does. So now we can go down. Whole seat's going down. There we go. We maxed out going down. We'll go up. We'll go back. Go forward. Sorry about the noise, I'm right next to a highway. There we go, we're forward. We'll go down. And we'll go back. I wonder if that's the plastic. They have the plastic all mangled on the passenger side of the seat. Yeah, it's probably the plastic. See, it's all twisted up on the side there. And I don't know what that, I think that's like a strap that's supposed to be underneath the seat. There we go, guys, seat's fixed. It's definitely not gonna blow the fuse. Just have to put another one in here. See you guys later. So guys, here was the pin. Somebody had cut it, you see that? And actually, I might have turned the flashback on on my phone. But somebody had ground the side of this pin, this whole thing underneath here. So here we go. I think it was this side. It was all ground, like somebody took a grinder to it. But hey, it works. There's no real play. I'll push up on the seat. You see that? There's more play in the tilt thing. Like to tilt the seat forward and backwards than there is in anything else. And this is what I was talking about. Like this thing is like all like mangled and twisted. It doesn't even stay in place. And then there's a strap that went somewhere. I don't know if that was supposed to go in like here. Like that. No idea. But hey, it's fixed. Is this the other end of the, no, this is like a pen cap. But yeah, there's the pen. See, you can see somebody cut it. Like, look at the straight lines. I don't know why somebody cut it, but they did. And there's like pennies in the track and stuff. But, see you guys later.